Hello, and welcome back to the One Hotspur channel. I'm Toby from Underscore Spur Center, and today I'm joined by Charlie from CB Designs and Bodie uh, from Hotspur.Opinionated. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. All right. Decent. Um, how else it going? Today we're going to be predicting, or uh, not predicting, we're going to be uh, showing what we would want uh, Nuno to play for the majority of next season. Uh, so we've added some players we've been linked with, uh, including James Tools, Kunde, uh, Takahiro Tomiyasu, Joaquin Anderson, and <clears throat> Manuel Locatelli. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, who wants to kick us off? Charlie Bowie? Yeah, I'll do it. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about this, and I'm so first of all, I'm really excited about Nuno's appointment. To be honest. Um, my dad actually, I've been talking to him a lot about it. He he wanted him from the start. Like he's a big fan mm -hmm. of this. But I mean, except for Poch, Ten Hag, and maybe Ragnik. I mean, Conte was unrealistic from the start. So except for Poch and Ten Hag, I can't I, honestly. I don't know if there's many better options than Nuno. So I'll definitely take it. Even though a lot of people say it's an underwhelming appointment, I think he could really do a good job. So I was at I um, on my other Tottenham account. I did a post an analyzing Nuno's um, tactics, lineups, and just overall setup uh, over his career. Um, so he was at Rio Ave. Um, he was at Rio Ave, Porto, uh, Valencia, Porto, and Wolves. Now Tottenham. So. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, at Valencia, uh, as a lot of us know, he played a 4-2-3-1 or 4-3-3, which was very offensive. Um, and mm -hmm. his team usually dominated possession. So, it, it, um, yeah, it was really impressive to watch that. And they scored a lot of goals. So, um, mm -hmm. that would be an interesting formation that you could use maybe a 4-2-3-1 like Poch used to. But mm -hmm. to be honest, I think he'll go for 3-4-3 like, <clears throat> like he did with Wolves. Where he's going mm -hmm. to use um, two very important and overlapping wing backs in Regulon and Doherty. And yeah, I think it would really work with us. Um, potentially a 3 5 2, but I think 3 uh, 4 3 is better because of the wings. So, uh, who do you think is going to play left back? Regulon, you said? Yeah. And then I mean, Sassignon. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah um, Regulon, Doherty. Depends because I mean depends how Doherty starts. We saw mm -hmm. that <laughs> it was, we saw that Doherty's already um, getting ready for Nuno in uh, Joe Hart's story the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the teacher's pet. But yeah, um, I think a lot of players will flourish under Nuno, mm -hmm. especially players like <clears throat> especially players like obviously Doherty, then yeah. Reg Regulon and Cessignon definitely. And then I think mm -hmm. Lo Celso, Lo Celso, I think will do really well under him. I don't know why. I just think if we play a, if we play a, for example, four, four, four three three, or he plays a, or he plays the cam in the three five two, I think he'll do really well. But yeah. So um, who do you think's going to be playing a centre back? Uh, I think it's centre back, Tomiyasu, Kounde, and Roden. I mean, Skriniar's a bit. I, I think there's a more chance of us getting contended in Trinia. So, yeah. I mean, hopefully, I'll be really happy with that. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <clears throat> I you said some... Doherty on the uh, on the right wing. Yeah, yeah on the right wing right. position. Um, then in midfield, I th I think I would go with a Hoiberg and Dombele double pivot, where Hoiberg mm. would play a like a deep uh, like deep line, you know, defensive mid role where he'd pick up all the balls. So yeah, as I was saying, um, Hoybier would play a, a defensive role where he would um, pick up the balls or, and intercept the balls, and then uh, look to play play it forward um, potentially. Um, so to to his partner um, Ndombele, uh, who I mm -hmm. think would have a, will have a whoop over season next season, because I mean last season was much better than his first season, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah, he produced yeah. some of. You know, really good performances, but I still think he was too inconsistent in at times. Um, mm -hmm. But when he really does get on his game, some of the passes that he manages to do are just like not not even the viewers can see them. Like it's crazy. <laughs> um, 
Um, so, yeah, I think he will be key. Um, uh, he will have a lot of freedom since Hoiberg and the back three um, and sometimes Regulon, who will be next to him, it will be covering for him. In defence, mm -hmm. he will have more like a Pogba role that Pogba had it uh, at France in the Euros with Rabiot covering for him uh, if we play this formation. Um, so, yeah, um, then I would play a front three of Kane, Son and Bergwin. Potentially Lucas, but there's a lot of rumours we'll, we'll, we, we are looking to sell him. I hope we don't, but... Mm -hmm. You know what's annoying? Like, there haven't been any rumors. Like, there've been rumors like we're planning to get rid of Soko, Winks, and them. But ha no, they haven't mentioned Dyer once. I will never understand yeah. why this club likes Dyer this much. Like, what has he ever done? I don't know. But, um, anyways, yeah, this would mm -hmm. be the formation that I would go for. If not this, I'd go for four three three, where we would use, um, Regulon, Doherty, Roden, Konde. And then we'd use uh, Hoiberg and Dombele and Lo Celso. Actually, no, I'd use Hoiberg, Skip, and then Ndombele or Lo Celso in a, re, uh, in a cam role. And then I'd play the mm -hmm. same front three. Or potentially, which is actually even more likely, uh, in a 3-5-2 where Kane and Son up front, the duo. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we'd use Doherty, Regulon, and then we'd have Ndombele, Hoiberg, and then Lo Celso. Or, or in Dombele skip and then uh, mm -hmm. skip and Hoiberg and then the Celso and Dombele in front of him, which would also gotcha. be good. Either one of these formations I'd definitely take. I think because um, I'm not going to go too, on, too much on about this, but um, yeah, Nuno really likes to experiment a lot with formation. So I'm sure he'll be trying a lot of things out, seeing what um, does best. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'd be happy with this for sure. All right. All right, so now uh, Bodhi uh, is going to show us what he would like, so. Yeah, so um, I'm going to go to my recent post. Uh, I, I got a lot of, uh, it was very controversial, let's say. I think a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of people disagreed, more so disagreed than agreed. But um, it's, it's, and I think it's because it's something new. It, it's something very different to what we're used to. Mm -hmm. I think it personally will work a lot. When I chose the formation, it was a three, four, one, two. I had the idea that I wanted to work around the players that we already had. Um, and also, I wanted to try and fit in different players for different roles where I think where we've seen glimpses of, like, perhaps Bergvine. I said, but I put Bergvine as a right mid slash right wing back. And the reason for doing that, right, is when I see him play, like, if he's playing, like, left, left wing, right, or, like, right wing, and then when we're on defence, because when we were playing with Mourinho, he was very defensive. When he was playing right back, I thought he done really well. He was very, he's a very good player at taking pl the players on. Um, he's also very good at releasing, uh, holding up the ball is, I think, is his best uh, quality. And mm -hmm. you put, and when I left him at right wing back, I thought, oh, you know, he could actually get a proper chance. So honestly, for me personally, I wouldn't really sign any right wing backs. I'd honestly try and make Darty and Bergvine work. Uh, and also. Another, I, another thing people didn't agree with much was Skip and Hoybier in the center of the park. It's it it come it's a very defensive, it's a very defensive side in the middle. But um, mm -hmm. the whole idea was going to be uh, that if you're going to sign new center backs, uh, if you're going to sign new defenders to the squad, they need to adjust over time. So mm -hmm. you, the idea would be that you would have some very good CDMs in the way, Skip and Hoybier. Yeah, Skip's done very well in the championship. He's been probably their best player um, mm -hmm. defensively. And Hoybier, he was probably one of the, signing of the signings of the season early on. And still late on, he was pretty well. So I think yeah. them two together, not to mention Skip's English, we could really use some... Uh, homegrown. Yeah, homegrown. Players. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just for the, for that sake, I'd have them too, and maybe Skip would become a rotation player later on once um, the, the defenders have start to mix. They've got got to know each other a bit more. But I think early on for the season, to be a bit more defensive in the center of the park is definitely the way to go for the side. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, and another thing yeah, that just, was very, yeah. I'll, I'll say that I'll I'll say the squad now. Um, I'd have Larice in goal. Uh, yep. Rodin, Kunde, and Tommy Asu. I think this is, is that how you yeah. pronounce his name? Yeah. As far as uh, I know. I could be totally wrong, though. Yeah. Uh, 
the only issue I have of Kunde is that he is a bit smaller than the average centre back. He's he's five eleven, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. So for a bigger team yeah, but like he's got a, speed. Yeah, but for a bigger team like Burnley, you have to have someone big in the centre of the park. So you have to yeah. have perhaps if Kunde and Roden switch places and Roden was in the centre, then that'd work. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, that's what I'd have for the back line. That obviously the back line has to get to know each other better. So that's why I'd have Skip and Hoybier as the two midfielders. Mm-hmm. Um, not to mention when you see when you've seen Hoybier for Denmark, he's gab he's uh, grabbed up a, a good few assists. So mm-hmm. I'd hope to see the same. Um, Bergvine, right mid slash right wing back, Regulon left mid slash left left wing back. Um, Kane Cam uh, slash centre forward. That's a thing that got a lot of people. Um, Going, going pretty. Uh, that's one one of the main things people disagreed with. And what I have to say to that is, uh, when when we were playing a four four two, right? Um, and it was Kane and Son up top. When Kane was assisting so much, he was playing. He was almost playing centre mid with the the way he tracks back. Mm-hmm. So it, I felt like, despite in the lineup it says he starts striker, when he's actually playing the game, it he it feels like he's playing like Cam. Let me let me go uh, one sec. I'm just gonna search up something here. Um, Harry King. Um, yeah. So on his on his a uh, heat map for the season, it shows him pretty. He's pretty much playing literally everywhere. Yeah. Main mainly in the center of the park. I'll actually I'll send a heat map for the group chat. Um, but if it says that it shows that he's basically been playing everywhere in the midfield and. That, and people disagreed with me uh, when I said he should be playing a cam, but he, that's where he's basically basically been playing anyway. So I think I play him cam. He has he has he has a lot of creativity as well. Um, so I feel like it's one that makes sense. Um, and I know it's not it's not, it seems unlikely the more uh, the longer the time goes on, but I'd re- really like to see Gareth Bale in the mix. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but so, like I said before, I'd like to see uh, Bale um, in the mix as well. He was he was obviously playing very good towards the end of the season, and um, he, I think he would he'd, he'd be even better next season, honestly. But when you have Kane playing deeper, and then you're supplying either from the wing sides, you're supplying a uh, high ball, so I will either go to Kane or Bale, who are both mm-hmm. tall, who are both relatively relatively tall. They're good in mm-hmm. the air. Um, yeah, Bale will get on the end of something, and then you have. Son that's constantly running through, and that's mm-hmm. when he was scoring. That that's when he was scoring his goals. I reckon when he was playing in behind the defense rather than trying to hold up the ball and create something, because he's mm-hmm. not a creator, he's a finisher. Um, yeah. So that's that's the reasoning for my side, well, honestly. L- later I feel on, a little harsh to say that Son isn't a creator. I mean, he does have at least ten assists, I think, uh, for the past no, couple no, seasons. No, 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 he does. He does have. It. He can he can uh, create stuff, but what I'm saying is mm-hmm. he's not an athlete creator. He, yeah. He's known for scoring goals, and mm-hmm. when you're scoring goals, you need, he the only the issue with him is the difference between someone like him and Kane is Kane can create these chances on his own. He needs people to create them for him, which is why I'd have Kane playing deeper because he's mm-hmm. been able to do he's been doing that all season for him. Like yeah. So for me, the the whole insight to this is playing a deeper midfield so the centre backs can get to know each other. While you uh, play to the offensive strengths that we have in K- in Kane's uh, creativity and Son's uh, speed and finishing, so it's just it's a team where this season everyone's just trying to get to know each other. Um, where obviously with Nuno um, coming in, he's going to be freshening a lot th- a lot of things up, big things. I'd like to see is like I said, uh, uh, Bergvine, Roden, Skip. Mainly them free, uh, and then yeah. we'll just see where we go from here. But that's that's the team I play. Other th- mm-hmm. oh, or I play a four four two. We do know how you love the four four two. The only thing I just that I would say about this team, oh yeah, Charlie, you can say after me, um, is that we've seen this season that we we struggle to link the uh, the defense of uh, the offense if we don't have one of Dom Player that's also on the pitch. Um, but. You know, Hoybier's shown in the Euro so far, and I think Skip uh, showed a little bit last season at Norwich um, that they can have the passes into the forwards. So it would just be interesting to see how, uh, how that played out. But uh, yeah, Charlie, what were you going to say? The thing is, the problem with this that I have, as I said, Ndombele is just too good to bench, in my opinion. But I understand mm-hmm. totally that Hoybier and Skip 
are there for the centre backs to get used to each other. But at mm-hmm. the same time, if we were going to play this lineup, Regulon and Bergwijn would need to play their asses off every game. They need to give their hundred percent every game because I mean, mm-hmm. look at this. If you got Skip and Hoybier, the only uh, like pull, uh, the the most attacking players after Kane and the front three, um, if you look at the lineup, I mean. We'd literally be relying on Kane to get every pass in, in the, like uh, we'd, mm-hmm. we'd need to to create every attack. So well, then if not changed. Kane, we'd need to. Yeah, no, that's not good, is it? What I'm saying is no, we but... would need to rely on Bergwijn and Regulon to, to 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 really play well, not just Kane. No, yeah, mm-hmm. I understand that, and that's what what I was saying before was that um, like like I said, I I don't I don't see Skip and Hoybe as a permanent thing. Because mm-hmm. I, I agree with you, they're too defensive. I the only reason I want to see them two starting off is to see how they do if they can eat, if they can create stuff because they have because Moibia and Skip have both respectively shown that Moibia and the Euros and Skip during the championship, they've both shown that they can create at points. And then mm-hmm. so not only do I want to skip give skip and run for the money, see what they can do together, but you need to you need to be able to support the centre backs when they're still trying to get to know each other and then once the once once they've settled and they and they understand each other, that's when I would switch for a more offensive lineup and either bench Hoy mm-hmm. skip for and Don yeah. depending on yeah. who's done who's done worse that season. That's the that's the whole idea of the team. It's still it's a team that's trying to get used to each other because players like Sessignon, Skip, Roden, they're still they still feel like new signings because they haven't played enough. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. So that, um, that's that's basically my team. Gotcha. All right. Well, here it is. All right, now we're going to do uh, my team. So uh, I think this might be a little controversial, but I think we're going to actually play in a back four. Um, after we announced um, Nuno on, when was it? About Wednesday, I think. Um, Fabio Partici was quick to point out how um, Nuno uh, played a 4-4 uh, or a 4-3-3 at Valencia and a 4-2-3-1 or uh, played four defenders in other places. And then um, just, uh, I think yesterday or the day before, uh, Alistair Gold reported that one of the reasons we were interested in a Tomiyasu was because of his ability to shift into a back three and let Reguillon kind of bomb on down the flank. Um, so I think that's what's going to happen in terms of like these three could kind of just shift over and then Reguillon could get forward more and uh, provide for uh, whoever's in the middle. Um, I think Hoybier, I mean, he's had an absolute uh, great season and then he's playing exceptional at the Euros. And for me, uh, you just can't drop in Um He's shown that he can be a fantastic player. Um, and I'm actually going to use that uh, also as an attacking mid. I think, uh, I think he's really going to show in these last few, a couple of America games that he is, uh, he's a great player and that we just need to use him a little more. Uh, he was really unlucky with injuries last season, I think. So. Um, I think, can I say yeah, something real quick? Yeah, go for I it. think one of the issue that I have with Ndon and the Celso playing together is how they're very um it feels it feels like the the that the midfield when I see them playing together it almost feels like the midfield's distort and it's not it's not very uh, organized because they're both mm-hmm. very attacking they like to be all over the pitch so and they're mm-hmm. not and they're not very defensive so it's yeah but it's, I mean we did play with Hoybier, Dombele, and Lucas Mora as an attacking mid for large parts of the uh, tail end of the season. Um, so I see what yeah, you're but, saying, but I also think uh, Dombele has grown a lot in terms of his like um, no, defensive I'm work. Lucas, Lucas tracked back, and this also doesn't really track back much. Oh, that, that's baloney! Come on. No, 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 no. Wait, did no, he no. just say that Lascelles doesn't track back? He's like Lamella. He's literally the only one going in for tackles in midfield yeah. usually. No, I'm like, what more, season I were you watching last season? Mora has more energy overall in the team. No, I agree with that, but Mora isn't a. Uh, it can't actually string a pass. He runs past five <laughs> players and then messes it up every time. You know what I mean? But oh, Celso can on. actually do it. Anyhow, I think um, Skip, I think, can rotate in for uh, Hoybier so that he doesn't have to play every single minute um, again. Um, and then front three, nothing really changing. Uh, Sun, Kane, and then uh, Bergvine. Um, and I think, uh, I think under Nuno, I'm hoping that we do a little more uh, like fitness because I think Dombele and Lasso could really benefit from that. Honestly, um, they under Mourinho, I think his like lack of fitness um, sessions and like getting the team in shape, I think, I was more detrimental to Lasso and Dombele. So, 
I'm hoping that if they're a little more in shape, uh, Don Blake can last more than 60 minutes, you know, and uh, yeah. hopefully Los also doesn't get injured as often. So that's the team I'd go with. And then you have the options on the bench of like Lucas Mora, um, Skip, Bale if he comes back. And then I could also see Tanganga rotating in for Tomiyasu. Um, and then if we're uh, trying to close out a game, uh, maybe even bringing in Doherty um, and playing a back three. Uh, just one thing I wanted to mention is, um, I mean, I like this team. I really do. But the problem with it, as I see it, is there's not enough change from last season. I mean, yeah, well, we've I mean, got Kounde and Tomiyasu. But basically, think... it'd be the same thing as last season. I mean, mm. Tomiyasu, I would not play him at right back. I know he can play there. He's had a few assists at Bologna, but he's... Like he's not very skillful on the ball. He'd be a bit like Tanganga in that sense. And Tanganga's not. How much of Tomiyasu right. have you actually watched, though? Uh, no, but I have watched. Um, <laughs> I have watched a few bits of him, and mm -hmm. I mean, no, but he's just a big guy. He's not like the guy that's going to run past like a few players. That's kind of the whole point. Is at the beginning how I said the the whole thing with Tomiyasu is that he's going to tuck back in. And then that's going to give Reggie on the opportunity yeah. to push up and work with Sun no, more on the flank. That's a good point. Actually. And then yeah. that also gives Bergvine a lot more freedom uh, than he had but last also, season when he was working with the likes of Corey and really, yeah. But what this lineup would really rely on is Lo basically becoming finally Ericsson's replace, replacement. Because if Eric, if Lo Celso does not step up next season, this lineup will not work. And to be honest, yeah, but we need someone that's not, else. To... That's not the necessarily whole... true. Because if sorry, Bodie, I'll uh, I'll let you after this. But I was going to say. If Los also isn't performing up to standard, it's a really easy fix of just moving Don Blay up and then uh, pulling Skip back here. Um, oh, yeah, I guess so. But I just feel like that's still not enough. I mean, and Don Blay can get those passes right, but I don't know. Uh, it depends. We'll, we'll see. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I like the lineup either. Um, I think it'll be between this and a 3-4-3. Three, three. Um, mm -hmm. But I do like what Bodhi said. Basically, when Bodhi put Kane, uh, Kane like in a more centre-forward cam role, that's basically what is. I mean, last season, uh, like uh, the the lineup showed that it was a striker, but in, in the end of the day, it wasn't. So it doesn't really change anything. He he basically was a cam last season mm -hmm. most of the time, as Bobby mm -hmm. said. So yeah, yeah. Um, all the lineups were interesting. I think so. We'll we'll just see how Nuno does. He experiments mm -hmm. a lot, so yeah, it'll be very yeah. interesting. Yeah, we'll be. Uh, any closing thoughts, Bodie? Uh, I wanted to say uh, two things on what Charlie said. Um, mm -hmm. The whole the whole point of Tommy Asu was it, he was he was never intent he was the the whole point of the signing he's ne he was never intentioned to be a player that was going to be a, like a, an attacking right back like Darty mm -hmm. or maybe like Max Aaron's a proper right back he was yeah. he the whole point of him was going to be used as a player he was never going to be an attacking player he was always a defensive fullback that was going to fill in for Regulon when he ran up he was mm -hmm. never the, the intention was never there for um. For, I mean, for a proper right back so that's mm -hmm. I think that's the reason of Tommy Yasu signing it's yeah. it's another adjustment it's another adjustment signing to get mm -hmm. ready for back three um yeah, I agree the other thing too and, is uh he does I think he does have the uh, the ability and he's only 22 so I think he could really grow into uh maybe being a little more attacking I mean did you see uh his goal against AC Milan yeah I did it yeah was I saw that what a goal that was that's what a goal what was um, that but, was it a left footer, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's he's right footed, so he's pretty comfortable um, with the ball on either foot. So that's good for us. Yeah, and another another thing I want to say on the Celtic, you talk about the Celtic not um he he would have to step it up and play like the Ericsson that we wanted that we originally wanted to buy. And mm -hmm. honestly, that was that was the whole point of the signing. So the so if we if he was not to fulfill that, then there would have been no point in the signing in the first place. Because that's the reason we bought him. So the fact that mm -hmm. you're saying that you shouldn't, that it's it's big responsibility for him to do that. It's it's only right because that's the whole point of us signing him. So mm -hmm. I think the yeah. this also does need to fulfill that potential soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Or we should probably move him on. Um, he has been playing pretty well for uh, Argentina in the Copa America, though. So uh, we're recording this on Saturday. So I'm looking forward to watching him later today. This is probably going to be posted on either uh, Monday or Tuesday. Um, so. You, you got the viewers will know how he uh, how he does against. Uh, I'm not sure who they're playing tonight, but um, hopefully he starts. He had a little injury that he uh, missed the past couple games from. But uh, yeah, they're playing Ecuador, so that's that's a team that he should be able to show his show his abilities. Um, but yeah, um, anything else from either of you guys? Nope, that's me. All righty. 
Uh, well, okay. thank you for watching. We appreciate all of you. Uh, make sure to hit subscribe, hit the like button, uh, hit the little notification bell, um, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. It's at one hotspur pod. Uh, we're trying to grow those a little more, so we'd appreciate that. And I think uh, those are all the announcements I have. So uh, thank you all for watching, like I said, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Come on, you Spurs.